Did you do that with your superpowers? Mm. I unmuted it. I unmuted it. You can see. <laughs> So this is kid friendly, but doesn't mean you have to be a kid to watch it. But we're just gonna kind of talk about where's my paper at? Did you throw it somewhere? Oh, okay. Which, which video? I thought, see? wait, not yet. I thought that you were. I thought that vampires had good eyesight. I thought you had like I don't know. Do you are you glittery like Twilight? It's nighttime. Are you supposed to sparkle? Oh yeah, I don't see any sparkling. You don't look like Edward Cullen to me, anyways. Not just during the daytime. <laughs> so tonight we are going to talk about just some ghost stories that we've, um, or, or real hauntings that we've experienced. Um, show a little bit of videos. We're going to talk about Halloween a little bit. Um, yeah, so just hang out with us. And if you have any questions, you can always type it in the box down below. So welcome, welcome. Gonna give us a. We're, we're old. We, we have to figure out this technology. But so we're going to talk about um, four particular situations that we were involved in. Um, first off, if you are interested in the paranormal, but you're scared, honestly, there's nothing I feel that you need to be scared of. Um, what you see on TV, um, if you watch any of the ghost shows on TV, those are very dramatic. So thank you for the love on our decorations. It's decorated all over, but it's, it, a lot of it's entertainment and that's good that they want to entertain because people enjoy that on TV. But just so you know, if it's something that you want to get into in the future, a lot of it is just us goofing off and sitting around trying to talk to ghosts. And sometimes they feel like talking to us and sometimes they don't. That doesn't mean that everything is, is good, but for the most part, there's really nothing to be scared of. So if you have a ghost in your house, try talking to it. Maybe you'll make a new friend. So the first thing we're going to talk about is I want to talk about Jeffrey from Hillview Manor. Um, if you are local to Pennsylvania in the Pittsburgh area, uh, north in Newcastle, there is a place called uh, Hillview Manor. And it was um, very, hey, What's up? Hi. it was various things, but it was also, um, it was, a, it was a retirement home, right? Nursing poor home, farm. a poor farm. So back, back in the day, um, there was a boy, I believe they think he was around nine years old, named Jeffrey. Um, him and his brother were at the poor farm. And one of them, his oldest brother, got adopted out real quick, and he didn't. But they say that he is still at Hillview Manor. So a couple of years back, um, I was actually trying to communicate with Jeffrey. And he has a lot of awesome toys that Hillview Manor staff has left for him, as well as people bring gifts in. I know we've brought gifts in before too. Um, so we were talking to him and I was asking him what his favorite toy was. And with the device we were using to communicate, he tells us what his favorite toy is. So time for you to play Work this next magic. clip. All right, so let's, we're gonna play our clip from Jeffrey. What's your favorite toy, Jeffrey? Okay. <laughs> so that was our clip of Jeffrey and Jeffrey told us about how he likes the green ball. So I thought that was really awesome. We did find a green ball that was in there. Um, so the next one we're going to talk about is Lily. Do you want to talk about Lily a little bit? Well, I've been to trans. It was Lily's from trans Allegheny lunatic asylum in Western West Virginia. And I've been there a couple of times, a couple of publics and this and that. And one of the first things the experiences I had with Lily is when my daughter, Nadia, anybody knows who Nadia is, when she was probably seven, eight, nine, somewhere in that age range, we went to Trans Allegheny and you can do the ghost tour. So we did the ghost tour. We did the haunted house too, obviously, but we did the ghost tour. During the ghost tour, they used to take you into Lily's room. They had this big ball that they put in the middle of the room and they would say to the group, if there's anybody you'd like to play with Lily, can you roll the ball with them? So Nadia, who was the only kid in our group, the ball rolled right to Nadia. So that was the first experience of Lily's. And then when me and Jen and the rest of the team, actually our old team, 
this was a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. our old team uh, went all night, did an all night investigation. But there's a documentary that has all the evidence in that from that. Yep, on, on our YouTube. on our Bump in the Night Society YouTube page. Um, so it was really late in the night. Um, I don't know, probably like 3.30 a.m., somewhere around then in the morning. Uh, we were getting kind of tired, so we went to Lily's room. So the, the story is that Lily, so whenever it was a mental facility, um, the thing was that Lily, they say, was the daughter of one of the patients. So one of the patients born yeah, had her there, and so that she lived there. So they have... Um, a really nice area set up for her. Again, people leave toys and things like that. And so we um, were trying to speak to her. Uh, We got a little REM pod action, but what was really cool is that she was playing with the flashlight. So we have a clip of that. So do your magic. Let's show them about Lily, the little girl from (laughs) Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. Can you turn it back on for us so we know it was you? Thanks. That's so awesome, Lily. Thanks so much. You make it brighter? Yeah, turn it. Turn it to the right. Make it as bright as it can get. So, yeah, that was so that was, you know, an awesome experience. Um, Yeah, she was, you know, listening to us talking about the flashlight. I know some people think flashlight stuff is bogus, but that was really cool. I mean, I asked her to make it brighter. She made it brighter. Um, That thing that was beeping was something called a REM pod. If you want to explain what a REM pod is. REM pod. Where's that video at? No, we don't have that. (laughs) REM pod is a device with like LEDs on it. It has an antenna that comes off of it. Say it in a kid way. It's a it's the device that makes lights and sounds, has a big antenna, like on a radio, if they have those. I don't know. Like I'm I'm aging myself right now. <laughs> but um whenever a spirit gets near this um antenna, this big silver metal thing coming out of it, um, it'll make that beep sound that you heard at the beginning of the video and like lights will flash and stuff. So it's pretty exciting. Which on the video, if you see there was an orb that went into the actual REM pod when it started to go off. Yeah, because I'm not always an orb person. You're um, not an orb person, not a flashlight person, really. I'm nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like, orbs, you know. Let's talk about that. apps. Phone apps. Phone apps. Yeah, don't get me started on that. <laughs> but yeah, orbs, you know, I'm kind of like, eh, it's probably dust or a bug. Um, I know a lot of people, especially people that don't know a lot about the paranormal, not that there's anything wrong with that, um, but a lot of people think that all orbs are ghosts but in this particular video um you saw the orb kind of move and then it went into the REM pod and then the REM pod beep so that was really cool (laughs) what was that sound sound beep (laughs) and you also saw the stuff with the flashlight was intelligent responses yes and that was all within like 10 minutes so i mean i definitely think we were communicating with lily which was nice because i don't know i got a soft spot for child spirits um all right, so next we are going to talk about. So I talk about Appalachia all the time, and Appalachia. I'm not going to get in all the uh, geographical stuff, but it's a mountain region and it extends far up north. 
Um, but a lot of people think West Virginia because West Virginia is the only state that is completely in Appalachia. Uh, you know, you hear the banjos. I love West Virginia, though. Like, I love West Virginia. So down south in West Virginia, almost to the Virginia border, there is an, a, an abandoned amusement park called Lake Shawnee. Now, the owner still runs tours. Um, there's a lot of history about that place. Um, there was some deaths of a settler family and Native American deaths. And there's a lot of um, Native American uh, bodies that are buried on that ground. So when you go to visit there, you have to always make sure that you're respectful. And one thing we like to do is we like to leave an offering. They have a special rock um, there that is really cool. It actually kind of looks like a Native American face now. And it wasn't like that at first. Um, but everybody leaves their stuff there. You go up and you know show your respects to the land. Um, and so when it was an amusement park, I believe there was six documented children deaths, I believe. Were, I don't think there were all children. Okay. It might not be all children. There was, there was quite a few children though. Yeah. I know there was, there was one on the swings. One in the pool. There was like a pool made, there was a pond. like it looked like a children. pond, but it was a, it, there, he got stuck. But so one, and I don't say this to scare people, death is just something that happens sometimes, unfortunately. But, um, there was a little girl there. I don't know her name, although some people think that it was Emma or Emily or something like that. But they had a swing ride. And so she was on the swing ride. And unfortunately, a Pepsi or Coke truck uh, backed into her when they were making their delivery and she passed away. Um, so one Where thing. Where the swings are now is not right. Yeah. yeah so the swings, were, the swings were moved. And it's the same exact swings, though. They actually like sold the ride for a while when it was an amusement park. And then they bought the same exact ride back ended up being. So now it's there. People leave dolls and they leave toys, balloons. She plays with a string. We were asking questions. Didn't realize that the little girl must have followed Troy over from the swings. And she basically was trying to talk to us because she wanted, she wanted some of our attention. So this is a video that I took of Troy and Sean on the school bus. So do you want to, and you have to listen to, to what she says. Who's Troy talking to at the swing set? Oh my gosh, that was a little kid. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So that I mean, a different stuff came through, and we do have a documentary about Shawnee on our YouTube page as well, if you ever want to watch the whole thing. But um, yeah, she said, "Come play." It was pretty clear. Um, yeah, I think we all were like, kind of had chills because you know, of course, then we went over there to talk to her. Troy left her a cupcake. She wanted to come play, so you know, we, we went well, over to he play. He asked her what kind of cupcake she wanted. And she's like, I don't remember. It was chocolate, I think. So you left her a chocolate cup. Yeah, on yeah. So that was awesome. <clears throat> so our last paranormal video um, is from August. So spirits are sometimes grumpy. Sometimes they don't want you in their space, and and that's understandable. I know I don't like when people show up at my house. You're always a drop of sunshine. I am a drop of sunshine. Um, but in August, I went to the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. That is in Tennessee. And I was looking for, I like to go to cemeteries and I like to kind of wander around and check things out. And sometimes I'll leave stuff, military, leave pennies and things for them. Um, so I was trying to communicate at this uh, Elkmont Cemetery and try to speak to any of the settlers, the original families of the Smoky Mountains, um, you know, in that area. And um, this particular spirit, wasn't happy that I was there. So we're going to play a quick clip from that. I know. I couldn't talk. I was tripping over my words. Mix it up. <laughs> Why did I invite you on there with me? You can fun of me. Never. All right. Never. Is there an Alistair here with us? Leave. Leave. Oh, we're being rude. Awesome. 
So that spirit didn't want me there. Um, <laughs> and that was my reaction. I was like giving my side eye. Uh, normally, whenever it's pre recorded, yeah, that was before I had my my <laughs> flute, or as uh, people call it, a flutophone. But I have a flute now, so if a spirit is mean to me or calls me names, I'll start playing the flute, and they don't always like that. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna start saying goodbye for tonight. I'm glad you guys all stopped by. I hope you learned something, and remember, you don't need to be afraid of ghosts. Um, just talk to them if you want to communicate sometimes they just uh you know they, they just want to feel some kind of connection so um yeah if you guys have any questions you know where to message us and we hope you had a good night and uh what's our what's our tag tagline everybody needs a little everybody needs a little, little bump, bump in the, in the night, night.